EAFC24 is less than one week away. And in this video, I'll give you a guide on how to start Ultimate Team. Now let's start with some important dates. First of all is the web app. The web app should come out on Wednesday the 20th as announced by EA. Now, time-wise, it's usually between 5 and 10 p.m. I'll give you that really broad window because with EA, it's been different most years. They aim for it to be around 6 p.m., but knowing EA... They can't really handle the traffic sometimes, so we guess around 5 to 10 p.m. But they sometimes do what's called a soft launch, which is a launch of the web app without announcing it on socials, without announcing it to the masses, so the people that are just checking by chance can get on early and test the servers without having an extreme overload of a bunch of people. So it could potentially soft launch around midday who knows we're going to be basically checking all day i think quickly following after we have got the companion app which is the phone app that's coming out on september 21st now most of the time that is anywhere from the morning to the afternoon you just have to check your app store and completely refresh it every time that you want to check um but that should come out the day after as announced by ea and then the day after that we have ea play access and the ultimate edition release now if you've pre-ordered the ultimate edition of the game or you have ea play you'll get access to the full game on the 22nd of september if you've got the ultimate edition you have limitless access the full game is effectively out for you straight away if you're on ea play and you've only got the standard edition you only get 10 hours it's like the previous early access in previous years however this year is a bit different because ultimate edition just gets the full game early i believe if you're on pc you also get the full game early if you've got EA Play Pro. It's like a £15 a month membership. If you've got that, you also get the full game on September 22nd. And if you pre-order the standard edition and you only get the standard edition, you'll get full access to the game on September 29th. They're the most important dates for you regarding the game release. All right, the info out of the way. Let's have a look at the first thing we talk about today, which is your welcome back packs. Now, last year, I received four 80 plus gold player pack so it's a gold player pack with one rare card 80 plus or higher as well as a stadium starter pack and two gold packs so that's what we received last year if you played the game before i want to say july you receive the pre-order bonuses but if you've just made a new account last week you probably don't receive them you have to have played the game for a certain amount of time and i'm not if i'm not mistaken i think you get better rewards the longer you've played i might be wrong on that though but i think you might get extra packs based on what you played in previous FIFA, so how long you've been playing the game. Um, but I thought we'd have a quick look at what I got last year. Now, a big bit of advice for you guys that are opening your welcome back packs this year on the web app. I would say straight away, discard things like badges, kits, and useless consumables. So, for example, a Czech League manager item or a, I don't know, a Russian League manager item, for example. These things aren't going to sell and there's no point you having them. But what you can do is discard them to build up a small coin balance to potentially use on players that might be cheaper when you're on the web app. Because obviously people don't have the game. So people don't have coins. So people can't buy players regardless of what their value should be. People can't go and drop a million coins on Mbappe. But you, what you have is idiots that will list these cards up. By the way, don't list your expensive cards up straight away. Uh, people will list these cards up for some reason straight away maybe it's out of excitement i'm not entirely sure uh, and they'll just sell their cards for insanely cheap to people that have a small amount of coins because either they've got lucky with a few informs or they've just discarded their consumables or maybe traded with gold cards to get a good coin balance i will say though make sure to hold on to gold cards especially ones that are from major leagues and obscure nations or vice versa because often we get the advanced SBCs, and those cards are either extremely important in the advanced SBCs or they sell for quite a bit on the market given the fact you need them to complete certain hybrid league and nation SBCs. Now, if you are able to build up a small coin balance, maybe you get an informal two in one of your packs and discard them. Maybe you just have a bunch of gold cards you can quick sell. I would look to put your coins into what you think are going to be meta players for the start of the game, like the full release of the game, because often they're a lot cheaper on the web app before the start of the game is actually out, before the game is released, and you can sell them for a lot more when people finally get packs opened and they actually get coins to buy these cards. An example I'll use from last year, I advised people to buy Hakimi last year. On the web app, he was about 20k, which might seem like a lot of coins, but most people had around 20k on the web app last year um, that opened their welcome backpacks. And you can see on Footbin last year, actually, um, he peaked around the release of the game at 60 to 70,000 coins. So if you'd have picked up just one, you're making 50k profit right there. 
I'm not going to sit here and give you a bunch of players to go and buy on the web app. I think you guys can go and check that yourselves. You know what players are matter. You know what people are going to be looking for. So I would say if you do find any decent deals, don't be afraid to pull the trigger. It's very rare a meta card will go down in price from the web app to the real game release. The only ones I would say to avoid are the really heavily advertised ones by major accounts. So if you're on Twitter and you're seeing huge traders say, go and buy this guy and this guy and this guy, a lot of the time they actually get over invested in and the profits aren't so large. So I would say try and find your own hidden gems if you can. Now let's talk about your pre-order FIFA points. If you pre-order the Ultimate Edition, you've got 4,600 FIFA points to spend when the game comes out. Now they will be on your account the moment you load Ultimate Team for the first time on your console. They won't be there on the web app or the companion app. So do not fear if your FIFA points aren't there on September 20th. They'll be there on September 22nd when you load the game up. So... I did a video last year calculating how many coins you can get from around 12k FIFA points. And obviously most of you probably won't have that. You'll have the 4.6k FIFA points unless you're spending your own money. But the reason why I'm using this is because it is an example of what you can expect when the game is fully out. Now, I calculated it around 300k coins per 12k. I don't know if that's 100% accurate this year. Things are a little bit different. We don't have position modifiers. Women are in the game. You know, there is a potential. I know there's dynamic packs this year as well. So the more packs you open, the more likely you are to get a better player. So it could be a lot different this year, but it's just a sort of ballpark base figure to look at. But the real question is how should you spend those FIFA points? Now, if you are a player in foot champions that can get 14 wins or above, I think if you have the time, your points are actually better spent in draft. But I will say this, if you're playing draft very early in the game, Past the second round, you will most likely face against a lot of sweats because a lot of people that are good at the game are going to do exactly this straight away. So if you're playing on day one, day two, once you get past the second round, it's probably demon time and you might have to lock in every single game. But I'm not going to lie, I quite enjoy playing against sweats at the start of the year. It's just a lot more fun learning the game mechanics and whatnot. But if you don't enjoy that, maybe stay away from draft. It's not your thing. And if you're not a very good player, please don't spend all your FIFA points on draft. If you get eliminated round one or round two, it literally isn't worth it. Like the value back from packs is not worth 300 FIFA points. If you keep getting round one and round two, it's not worth it. I'd stay well clear if I were you. But if you're a decent player, you back your ability and you don't mind playing some sweats, draft is a great way to make maximum amounts of coins from your FIFA points. Now, what should you do if you're not very good at FIFA or maybe you just want to open packs? Try and time you opening packs the best possible time now saving your fever points for the friday the 29th of september for the uh, road to the knockout promo is not a bad idea you're definitely going to get some kind of promo pack maybe it's a 15k or a 25k in the store early definitely possible um if you're wanting to open them straight away on the 22nd i don't think the nike mad ready players are going to be super expensive given the fact they're only cosmetic upgrades but you can if you want to um it's not going to change the fact that meta cards are going to be expensive and if you look in you look in but judging by the likes of hakimi from earlier that we looked at and the likes of tamori as well we saw a sharp price increase around the 27th 28th last year and that's roughly around when people started getting on the full game for the first time and being able to transfer their FIFA points or add FIFA points and whatnot, they started to get coins. We saw a sharp increase in price around there. It's roughly about four or five days into the game release sort of thing. Um, and it was the same with Hakimi. It's the same with a lot of the lower rated meta cards, so the 84, 85s, that people want for their first foot champions team. So if you're trying to time your FIFA points to where players are possibly the most expensive and possibly the best value, I would say probably around the 28th 29th of september all the way through to like the 4th of october is probably your best window and the last bit of advice is make sure you are opening preview packs because not only do you get a, effectively an extra pack at the end because you get to preview another pack and if it's good you can buy it or not most of the time they have a very 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 small percentage better chance of getting a better card so it's like let's say 4.4 percent for an 86 plus on a 7.5k on a preview pack it's usually 4.5 percent you know it's a tiny bit better so you might as well maximize your odds now effectively spending your time is going to be key if you're ordering the ultimate edition you don't have to worry about this really but it's kind of what you want to spend your time on objectives are usually king at the start of the year you can get yourself some really nice incredible packs through species and objectives and potentially shape your first teams for the year i would hold off on buying expensive starter squads until you've completed advanced league and nation hybrid uh the all the advanced spcs effectively that give you really nice and tradable packs but also make sure you sort of wait until you've completed the objectives too as you see 
early on in the game from the very start you can get two 100k packs very early from objectives now I don't think mine were very good last year, if I remember correctly. They weren't actually particularly amazing, but 100k packs are great because you can get a hidden 84-85 that will mold your team potentially. Like, last year, I remember seeing people getting Ed Air Miller Taos, Furlan Mendes, Ashraf Hakimis, Tamoris, and, and, and players like that who might not seem like they're absolutely insane, me listing them off now. But at the start of the year, these cards are 100k plus potentially. Like some of them are 70-80k. I think Furlan Mendy was 100k last year like and these cards can genuinely shape your teams there's no point going and buying a 30 50 100k starter team before you open these packs because you might be losing tax on players you sell straight after opening these packs when you pack something that will completely change the way that you have your team so in my opinion i think it's more worth it to do spcs and objectives straight away than going and buying your team now when you're on the full game what game modes should you target now the game comes out on a friday Squad Battle Rewards come out on a Sunday morning. Now, I know Squad Battles is mundane and boring, and I know you're watching Div Rival Rewards on the screen. I know these aren't Squad Battle Rewards. I just wanted to show you guys what the Div Rival Rewards look like from last year. But spending Friday and Saturday and, and potentially Sunday morning playing some Squad Battles could genuinely help build your starter teams and build your, your ultimate team out early on. Uh, given the fact that they do come out on a Sunday, you can potentially go on on Friday. Maybe you get on the game on Friday night or you get on the game after school on Friday afternoon. Playing even 10 to 15 squad battle games, which sounds like a lot, I know, but when you're learning a new game, it's actually not the most mundane and boring thing in the world and squad battles are now four minute hard so it's a little bit quicker um you can have some decent packs on sunday morning and going into sunday morning having a, a nice little boost a nice little cash injection i've seen people get genuinely really nice cards from squad battle rewards i believe most of them are tradable as well if i'm not mistaken i might be wrong on that they might have made squad battles untradable but I'm pretty sure Squad Battles are tradable. Here's a really good video from Jubaru from last year. These are the first Squad Battle rewards he opened of last year. I believe he got Elite. I'm not entirely sure how many games he would have played for Elite 1 Squad Battles, but he got himself 250k packs and 26,000 coins, which again, probably doesn't sound like a lot because we've just come from 85 times 10 Simulator in FIFA 23. But in FC 24, like that's a really nice injection into your club. And uh, we'll see right now. Were they tradable? Kunde's a huge pull. They were untradable, sadly. That's quite annoying. I forgot that they made them untradable. But that's still a really... Really nice pack to get at the start of the game and a really nice card to have in your team kunde obviously you're not gonna get kunde let's just make that clear i'm just saying like you could get lucky and get something quite nice i think it's worth playing squad battles i think it's worth investing the time and on a sunday morning you probably thank yourself that you did invest a little bit of time into squad battles even if you just play like five or ten games and get yourself a gold rank the very last thing i'm going to talk about in this video is foot champions and my advice when it comes to foot champs at the start of the year it is actually kind of daunting i feel like sometimes with foot champions to either enter it too early or not to enter it when it's too early if you get the point super early from my experience usually it's actually quite a balanced crop of players at the start of the game in foot champions qualifiers so i wouldn't worry too much about that don't stress about qualifying um but i think foot champions is actually a really good opportunity to make coins because with foot champions not only are you going to make coins from the rewards but typically players prices just go slowly up in a graph until until uh, foot champions and the foot, first foot champions of the year is usually week one or week two of the game being out so it's a good opportunity to make some coins if you have some meta players in your squad for qualifying and also you can get some coins from rewards so in my opinion try and make sure you qualify for foot champions early on i know it's so easier said than done it's not exactly it probably sounds silly getting advice like hey go and go and do that thing that's actually quite difficult but I just think that Foot Champions is actually a really good opportunity to make coins early on. And although they are scrapping red picks, I know it sounds awful. They're scrapping red picks for equal value rewards. I don't know what that even means. Um, I still think that Foot Champs would be a great opportunity to make some coins. I'm going to leave you with some of the really important information for FC24 from the recent pitch notes, which is that, like I just said, red picks are no longer going to be Foot Champions rewards. They're going to be replaced with an equivalent value in game. Again, I'm not entirely sure what that means. And they will be featured during select campaigns and seasons, whatever that means from EA. They're being deliberately vague on that but ultimate team rewards ultimate team foot champion rewards will be refreshed throughout the year to make them feel more relevant to what's going on during the game so i'm guessing that means that we're going to get promo cards in rewards which i'm actually quite excited about uh, and as i said earlier squad battles are now four minute halves reduced from six minutes and the games that count towards your weekly rank are actually reduced from 40 to 32 which means that you will have to play less games in order to get a rank basically um, which is really really nice and of course as they said earlier 
Uh, squad battles, rivals, and champions will now feature weekly seasonal XP rewards to help you climb seasonal XP quicker. And the last thing is, and this one's a bit annoying if you're a PC player, and I'm really sorry to break this news if you didn't already know and you're a PC player. PC market is actually only PC and Epic Games together. Uh, Nintendo Switch has got its own market. Uh, EA Play PC, sorry, EA Play and Origin, PC and uh which is like steam for example and pc and epic games all share a market and then playstation and xbox share the combined market so unfortunately the market might not be fun if you're a pc player but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully it was helpful to you guys if you enjoyed please leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new around here and i'll see you lads later